In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use AWS Systems Manager to connect to a private EC2 VM or instance in your home lab. Now you might have some questions. What is AWS Systems Manager? AWS Systems Manager is a service that allows you to control the configuration of EC2 instances and more within AWS. It has a lot of features such as being able to automate backups, configuration, set baseline compliance for images, as well as has its own native connections using SSH over a service called Sessions Manager. And today that's what we're going to be using. So stay tuned. Now, why do we want to use Systems Manager? It's because that final point of talking about Sessions Manager. Sessions Manager will allow us to create a session within a private instance without opening up any external firewalls, using a VPN, or exposing our home lab or private servers to the public. Now, all this is natively handled by one little agent that you install on your VM or instance called the SSM agent. Now you know the what and the why. Now, who am I? My name is Joseph Terlecki and I'm a cloud infrastructure engineer, and I am here to help you learn everything cloud and DevOps with practical examples. So please click that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and a like if you'd like to see more content and watch more of my videos. Thank you. Now let's get building. Before we move forward, we need to make sure that you have some prerequisites handled, such as you need an AWS account. You will need an IAM user enroll with admin privileges, as well as you'll need an AWS CLI and a local instance such as Ubuntu or even uh, a server in another cloud lab environment. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an IAM service rule that our managed instances will use when we need to connect to the instance. So normally in an EC2, you have an IAM rule associated with it, but since this is locally to my environment, I can't directly assign it to it, but Systems Manager allows us to do that with what's called an activation. We need to make sure we have the correct TLS certificates installed. We're gonna install the SSM agent locally onto our machine, and then we're gonna enable advanced instance tier within Systems Manager, which will allow us to use the Sessions Manager feature. And then we will configure SSH locally, and then we will test our connections. Now let's create our instance rule. You wanna to go to IAM, go to your roles, and we're gonna create an instance rule. Great rule, EC2. Now we're going to sign up permissions. What we're going to do is we're going to look for a policy called uh, Amazon SSM Managed Instance Core Policy. You want to check that and continue forward. We don't need any special tags. And let's name our rule something like Demo SSM Rule. Now hit Create Rule. Now we're going to spin up our local VM or instance, or maybe your case, you might have another cloud instance. You want to go ahead and jump on that server, and we're going to verify that the TLS certificates are there. Now that we're on our instance, we need to make sure that our SSL certificates are there. And to do that, you can just do an LS, Etsy, SSL, certs, and then you want to grip Amazon. We can see I got all four root CAs there. And then the other ones you want to grip for is Starfield. And we got those. So what you need is you need these four PEMs here, and then you need these three Starfields. Once you have these, then everything will connect through SSL and you don't have to worry about encryption. Now that we verified SSL and our certificates are on our instance, we need to go over to our hybrid activations and get that started. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our console and we're going to make a quick pit stop in IAM. You're going to go over to roles. You're going to go to that role that we created. You want to go to trust relationships and make sure that this is ssm.amazonaws.com. If not, it might be EC2. Just go to edit trust relationship and replace that with SSM. You're done. Then we'll go over to Systems Manager. And then we're going to go over to Hybrid Activations. And you can see within the screen that I already have one that's active. This is the one that I use for my home lab now. And this is for my four Proxmox nodes that I can manage when I'm outside of my home network and just not at home. So you want to go to Create Activation. I'm going to give it a description of Demo Activation. We're going to specify an instant, instance limit of one because we're just testing this on one instance. Depending on how many you want to have and manage, you could put more in here. And then we're going to go to select existing IAM rule that has required permissions. Find your demo SSM rule or whatever you named it in here. And then for the other two fields, we'll just leave these blanks. So they will provide default 30 days for the expiration date and a randomly generated instance name. But it's not really important to us. And then just hit create activation. Now note this page here and save this information. You're going to need this activation code because you only get this once. So you make sure you put that somewhere that you're going to find it. And then you want to copy down the activation ID because we are going to need this to pass into the SSM agent to make our connection and activate it as a registered instance. So now that you have your activation code and your activation ID, now we need to install the SSM agent on our instance. Now the following commands, I'm going to paste a snippet in a description for a gist to my GitHub. So that way you could follow along. Make a directory in your TMP slash SSM. And I've already created it just so you don't have to. 
And then we're going to curl down our agent binary, which you can find in the description of this video. And just for quick visibility, here's the documentation on it. So that way, if you wanted to install this agent on something else, such as a Mac OS, uh, a Windows server. And then I also have another tab for the plugin that we're going to be using later. So just wanted to give you a quick view of these. Now back over to here, we're going to curl down that binary. Now that we got our binary, BMP, SSM, we can see it's there. Now we need to install it. So you do that with a sudo, bpkg i tmp ssm amazon agent deb go ahead and install that and now we need to stop the service so it'll be a sudo service dot amazon ssm agent i did that backwards sorry sudo service amazon ss agent then stop now at this point we're going to register this instance with that activation code and that activation id we took earlier so what we're going to do is I'm going to paste this long command in here. And there's some placeholders here. So we're going to do a sudo dash environment of the Amazon SSM agent dash register dash code and then the activation code. And I will supply this with my information. So there's my activation code and then here's my activation ID and then the region. For me, all my stuff is in US East 1. Depending on what region you started this in, you want to double check. So for me, US East 1. And just so you know, make sure you go over to here and just double check what your region is. Mine is US East 1, it might be US East 2, Asia Pacific, so you want to make sure you're in the correct one. And once that's done, just hit enter. And we can see we successfully registered the instance with SSM using the managed instance ID, that big GUID. Now that our instance is registered, we just need to make sure before we go over and check the inventory that we start the agent again. If I just go back up to my commands, Let's just go to start and now the ec2 amazon ssm agent is running and we should be able to see our instance within the console now so if we go back over to the console and go to fleet manager now that we're back over in the systems manager screen you can see that we have another managed instance here and it's this one here with this mi long string the ubuntu 2004 and then we can see my computer name is that parallels instance that I'm running and the association status is success. Sometimes this might say pending, but don't worry, you can still connect to it because what it's doing is just gathering additional information for the systems manager, like entire package. Now that our instance is registered and says success, yours might still say pending. Sometimes it takes a few minutes, but just be patient and it'll be successful. Now to be able to connect to it using sessions manager, we need to configure what's called advanced instances. So while we're in the screen, if you go over to account management, we go to instance tier settings. You want to go down to here to agent auto update. Look at that. That all looks good. And then this top one instance tier, you want to go to change account setting and you'll hit down here that you want to change it to your advanced instance tier. Um, once you accept, it takes about 20 minutes to a half hour. And once that's done and you see your settings here in the main screen, says advanced, then you're ready to run Sessions Manager. After that's done, I'm going to go to here. We're going to go to Sessions Manager. We're going to go Start Session. Then you're going to find your instance. And we can see it's right here. This Ubuntu instance. You're going to click that and hit Start Session. This is going to open up another tab. And we can see here that I got a show. And I am the SSM user. The SSM user is a default user that is created by the SSM agent. And if you noticed, we didn't provision any SSH keys. All that stuff was automatically handled for us. So if I do a uh, home directory, look, there's no .ssh file. The systems manager doesn't need SSH keys. And that allows you to make these connections without having to manage anything. So no SSH keys to worry about, no public facing subnets, no public facing infrastructure, but, we still had to connect to a browser to do this. The final step in this project is to be able to configure your local SSH to be able to make this connection. So what you want to do is you want to open up a terminal on your computer that you would, your workstation or anything that you'll be using to manage and connect to your instance. Go ahead and open up a terminal. Now, as I said before, I'm going to keeping a gist to go with this um, tutorial. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead install something called the Sessions Manager plugin. And this will actually allow you to run native SSH locally over the AWS start session command. And where this is important 
You also have to have your AWS CLI configured and an IAM rule or user to, uh, to be able to make the commands. So follow along, we're gonna install. Now that you know that information, let's install the plugin. Similar to before, you're gonna pull down a zip file. You're gonna unzip it, okay? And you're gonna run sudo. You can see that I already ran this command. You're gonna run that and we can see it's successful. And then all you wanna do is run a session manager plugin command and it'll let you know it was successfully installed. So depending on your OS, the steps might be a little bit different. So that's why I highlighted this documentation here. You can see there's different ways to do it with Mac OS, with Linux, with Windows. I will put these links in the description along with the gist for all these commands, or you can follow their documentation. Now that you have the SSM plugin configured and installed, we're ready to connect to our instance. What you want to do is you want to go back over to console. I'm going to go right here. And you want to grab this instance ID from the instance that you created. I have five. You should have one. So you want to copy that. Let's go back to our terminal. And you want to run an AWS SSM start session dash dash target and then the instance ID. If I run that, we can see that I'm starting a session. Now, this is just a standard uh, shell. You want to upgrade this to a bash. So we can see that I am the SSM user in that bin. And I'm in this Parallels Virtual VM, which is using <laughs> AWS to connect to my local machine. And that's pretty much it. You can see that we were able to connect to this private instance, even though it's running on my machine, without SSH keys by using AWS SSM. Now, it is good to note that this advanced tier does cost a little bit of money. If you run this service for 24 hours a day for one month, it'll cost you about five bucks. Now, if you were to set up a VPN gateway or anything like that to your home lab or your private instances, chances are you'll probably be paying five or more dollars. So if you just want to manage one instance and use it as a gateway to your home network, I think it's perfect. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't cost too much. It's five bucks. Don't go to Starbucks for one day out of the month and you'll be good to go. Thank you for watching and making it to the end of this video. Now you know how to use AWS SSM Sessions Manager to connect to your private instances. If you would like to see more practical cloud and DevOps material, please subscribe and hit that like button and stay tuned. As always, have a great day.